my Juicy Co-Creators, Lilu here. I'm in South Korea, in Seoul, uh, with Misha, that is German, that has created and put together this amazing place called The Baker's Table. And uh, it's, it's quite a story, and it's an inspiring one. This is an interview that was not planned. I just interviewed Ron uh, not far from here, and uh, we're going to have lunch, and I'm just... Uh, uh, just I think I think a, a, a lot of people make excuses, you know, to make their dream come true. This was one of your dreams. You made it happen with no money, very little money that you had to borrow. This neighborhood didn't look like it is right now. It, it, it was it was, but you just knew. Huh? You just knew inside. Tell us about that moment where you you were here. There was a potential for an investor to be uh, interested about this other place across the street, but they didn't want to do that. Yeah, right. Uh, it was a dark winter night, and uh, yeah, like you say, I was uh, I was kind of broke, and somebody wanted to invest, and we came over here. We met over here in the evening. It was cold and it was dark, and the guy looked at the other place and he said, "Oh, no way! Look at the neighborhood. It's nothing going on over here." So he said, "Forget about it. Uh, I'm not going to do this." Uh, But uh, eventually, I looked at this place over here, which was really run down. Uh, that uh, the guy had a like a kind of garage next door. He fixed things with metal. It was dark and it was a lot of mess. But uh, it was not a restaurant or anything. No, 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 no. It had nothing to do with food at all. Uh, so, uh, well, I thought anyway. I had to do. I had to do something uh, because I was at a point where uh, I had to do something with my life. Uh, I mean, you're at the point where you had to do something with your life because because you're actually a third generation baker, so you already had this knowledge. You knew how to make bread. You had already had several places in the past here in Korea. You've been living here for 15 years or so, on and off. So you had already uh, 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 you were successful at it, but then you something happened. Huh? You you left. You that that stopped, and you restarted from scratch. All right, that. Uh The bakery thing, uh, maybe you could say I came back to my roots. Yeah, I had something else, also with with food and drink, but uh, nothing with my uh, professional job that I had before. Uh, I used to be a chef patissier for a hotel a long time ago. That's how I came to Korea first time. But then something something else happened there, yeah, and uh, actually I never thought I'm gonna do this again. I never thought I'm gonna wear. A white jacket again and and go in the bakery, but I had to do something. So uh, I thought, why not? Yeah. People people tried that before. Some had a little success and some failed. Yeah, but uh, in a way, I always thought there will be one day a good point to make some nice bread in Korea, yeah, because the stuff you get over here still usually is not very good. It's not what what we consider to be bread. It's sweet. It's weird. And, and uh, it's yeah. it's not like European stuff. Huh? So it seems like you had this idea from uh, the logic and the heart coming together. Like it was an intuition, and at the same time, you could see that there was some some possibilities to cl clearly make it successful. But you had to. I mean, this uh, this is a risk. Yeah, why not? But I didn't have much to lose anymore. So you know, uh, yeah, I thought I just do this. I borrowed some money from a friend. The last one that was left, you know, to thought, oh, I can help you, and so he did, and uh, I'm very thankful to him too. Yeah, well, and then it was uh, a lot of hard work. Yeah. How did you find the energy to even get it started? Because sometimes, you know, we just when it's dark times, we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, nothing seems to give us the energy to put together uh, or to even dream again or to start yeah but I think I know when people are down in life they get to this point yeah. and but you were there yeah but to be down and to be at the end it's two different stories yeah. and I felt uh, I'm, I'm not down only down anymore I felt I'm I'm coming close to something really radical so that gives you energy yeah That gives you energy. Like a new life starter. Survival. Yeah. There's no doubt. You know that that uh, that motivates. You know, and, and actually, at that time, when we started over here, I had a motorbike accident. So I came in here with a broken arm, 
and I ripped out this the ceiling to to start my renovation. So uh, when I think about this now, I also think that was really crazy. Yeah. And I don't know if I could do this one more time, yeah. but I did it. So and luckily, it worked out. Yeah. I believe also part of our success. First of all, we have a nice product. There are some people they heard I'm German, also Korean people, who had some relation with Germany before. They used to live there, and they still appreciate the bread. And they heard, oh, there's a German bakery. They came, so that spread. Yeah, pretty fast, huh? Because you had to make that decision. You 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 started it. You repainted. You did however you could to make tables and seats and get it ready, and, and get this space in order. But you, but you very, and this is what's beautiful, I think, by getting um, daring to dream and do this quantum leap, if we can say, when we don't know what's going to happen. But you, you jump, and then there is life that supports you, and you were supported even by. Uh, Uh, TV here in Korea. Yeah, right. We was lucky enough that we we opened a few weeks and we had the TV crew coming in here by accident and they say, oh, can we do an interview? And what do you do over here with the German bread? And there was no German bakery. There still is no German really bakery in in in, in Korea. So yeah, we we was lucky. Yeah, but. Is that really luck? Because because you you know the secret and the law of attraction and how uh, what you described to me earlier. I, I just you know when we have pure intentions. Yeah, why not? I do I do believe that yeah, if you have a pure intention, if you're yeah, if you're honest and you would like to have something, I don't want to say want something. You would like to have something. You can get this. Eh? And I think also that's why a lot of people come over here because for me. I'm happy when I see people are happy who come over here. I don't think about the money yeah. in the first. Of course, I have to think about the money. Otherwise, I will not survive. Mm -hmm. But if I see especially local people, they come over here and maybe they never had a sandwich before. And I don't serve knife and fork. So they sit over there and they don't know what to do with the sandwich. So eventually they pick that up and they buy it and even they sit outside, I can see, they say, mm, Mashiso, tastes good. I'm really happy with it when I see this, yeah. So, and I think, yeah, if you are like this, that radiates, yeah. yeah, and people can feel this also, yeah. Of course, that's not always possible, and it, it's a business, so sometimes it's, it's just yeah. busy and it's work, but yeah, deep in my heart, I do believe this, yeah, yeah. and that's what I want. Yeah. And you feel fulfilled? Yeah, why not? I can make people happy. Yeah. I'm happy too because yeah, I have a life. You know, there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this delicious moment, and I can't wait to try the bread. Okay, <laughs> enjoy some food. Thank you. Where about in Germany? Cologne. Cologne. Hello to all the the German people out there. We send you so much love from beautiful Korea. Make your dream come true, step by step. This is happening. Much love. Bye.